We access all items in all libraries, some three billion books and documents in all languages. We have all graphics, maps of villages and galaxies. We get data from several hundred spy satellites. The mind designed the whole thing. The logic and memory are combined into one super chip. Not really a chip, though. More of a polymeric, grapefruit-sized blob, traced out by electron microscope. The mind selected the tri-die shape deliberately. It permits complete memory access in a matter of nanoseconds. The entire data output is integrated into a series of microscopic networks and fed into a viewer to form a meganet. Each of the mind's eyes is observing a different net projection, and each projection passes through the viewer at a speed of 40 frames a second. One fortieth of a second is the approximate reversal rate of the visual purple of the retina, and this represents the upper limit at which the meganet mind can operate. His actual thought processes, of course, are much faster. Welcome to Vintage SF. I'm Richard Rempel. Was that excerpt from William Gibson? Early Gibson, let's say in the 80s? No. It was by Charles L. Harness, called The Paradox Man, from 1953. In fact, it comes from a short story from the 1940s by Harness. This is Cyberpunk Week. It starts with Charles L. Harness's The Paradox Men, and then we have two works by William Gibson, Burning Chrome on Wednesday and Neuromancer on Friday. So is The Paradox Men cyberpunk? Well, it certainly contains a character that you would think of as a cyberpunk character, the Meganet Mind. From that description, you can tell that it's very much like an AI or a computer of today, except it's something that's integrated into a person's mind. But let's talk a little bit about the story itself. It is literally a swashbuckling space adventure. There is a prologue where we have a spaceship that has crashed and a being that has escaped from it. Chapter 1 opens with a daring caper by a thief named Alar. Alar can create a mental shield around himself which stops projectiles. The speed of a projectile is absorbed by the force field, but the force field is not able to stop slower movements, like knives and swords. So fencing skills are important. Our protagonist Alar is armed with an epée, or foil, or saber. The caper in chapter 1 goes awry. Alar must defend himself in a fencing fight. He escapes by throwing himself through a window, a mile off the ground. How is he going to survive? Well, that you'll have to find out for yourself, but survive he does. We are introduced into a far future world, one where the Americas have combined, and there is a ruling family, an aristocracy. Alar is part of a guild of thieves. Their leader is thought to be dead. He's been missing for five years. This is an adventure story that goes to bizarre places. In the Encyclopedia of Science Fiction, Brian Stableford writes, His first two novels, Flight Into Yesterday, a short story in 1949 in Starling Stories, and then published as a novel in 1953. Variant is The Paradox Men. And The Ring of Retornell from 1968 features cycles in time and heroes who undergo transcendental metamorphosis in order to manipulate their own destinies and that of the human race. Both novels are shamelessly melodramatic and have an obvious kinship with the work of A.E. Van Vogt. Charles L. Harness is an original, stylish, and imaginatively audacious writer whose relative neglect is difficult to understand. His most recent books may not have quite the scope and exuberant panache of his earlier efforts, but it is nevertheless unfortunate that the works of such a colorful and highly readable writer should still be condemned, with one recent exception, to appear only as ephemeral paperback originals. Despite his one-time fashionability in the UK, none of his recent works has been published there. So we have a story about a charismatic thief and a corrupt aristocracy. He has stolen something very important to them. They will stop at nothing to find him. In this futuristic world with middle-aged battle techniques, we find an enigmatic character called the Meganet Mind. 
this person is connected to all their computer systems and analyzes things for them. He is a seer of sorts, an oracle who seems to always be right. This wildly unpredictable novel takes us to the moon and then to the sun, stations on the sun. Can Alar stay ahead of the aristocracy? Is the mind on the side of the aristocracy or the guild of thieves? Throw in interstellar travel and time dilation. Mix in more action and a romance, and you have the Paradox Men. Well, why do I have two copies of the Paradox Men? The first one I got was the New English Library Edition from 1976. But then, of course, I started to collect a series from a publisher. Classics. You can see up here. Classics of modern science fiction. But I discovered that this book was also edited by Charles L. Harness himself. And there were supposed to be some changes. So I decided to keep both books to look for some of those changes. Besides correcting some grammar and the odd sentence or two, all I could find was that the last chapter in the New English Library edition was split into two chapters in this edition. But what I like most about this edition is that there are two introductions and two afterwards, including one by the author himself. So you have a foreword by Isaac Asimov, an introduction by George Sabrowski. Then you have an afterword by Brian Aldiss and another afterword or author's note by Charles L. Harness himself. I want to read a couple excerpts, the first from the introduction by Zabrowski. Harness's original title for this novel was Toynbee 22, which refers to the famous British historian's numbering of civilizations that have come and gone. T21, or Toynbee 21, is the number of the civilization in the story, which is trying to avoid decline. Certain Toynbee philosophers and other individuals of Harness's world hope that space travel, by means of a faster-than-light starship, the T-22, Toynbee 22, will serve as a bridge to a new culture. Interestingly, our own world also harbors the hope that the opening of space will liberate human hearts and minds as we move beyond a planet of limited economic horizons into an open universe. So Toynbee had a theory that civilizations all went through a certain cycle. Civilizations, I believe, come to birth and proceed to grow by successfully responding to successive challenges. They break down and go to pieces if and when a challenge confronts them that they fail to meet. The first civilization that followed this cycle was the Egyptians. And then each of the following civilizations up to T21, which is in this novel, followed those cycles as well. So that was part of the prediction model that the Meganet mind was using. Zabrowski in his introduction also compares Harness to some other authors. Building on the pioneering dreamlike scenarios of A.E. Van Vogt, Harness produced a more coherent and yet still emotionally satisfying version of the master's wheels within wheels story. The Paradox Man is comparable to Alfred Bester's The Demolished Man in 1953 and The Star is My Destination of 1957 in its sweep and color, especially in the ethereal beauty of its closing pages. I would agree that the closing pages of The Paradox Man takes our understanding of the story to a new level. It is an awe-inspiring revelation of the human condition. This intricately plotted, melodramatic space opera is deeply satisfying. Pay attention as you read, as it comes back upon itself. I give The Paradox Men 8.5 out of 10. Recommended. So have you read any of Harness's short stories or novels? What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Until next time, keep reading.